Tasia. And Alex. With the local lowdown, and we are here with Chimes of Bayonets at BJ's Fredonia. Please introduce yourselves and uh, tell us about the role that you play in the band. I'm Joe Kepik, former radio production student in Fredonia, graduated in 1999. Is that too <laughs> close? Hey, hey you c they can't hear you. Uh, and I, I sing and play guitar in Chimes of Bayonets. I'm Kevin Dossinger. Uh, I graduated with a BFA in graphic design, 99, from Fredonia, and I play drums. My name's Casey. Uh, I'm still working on my master's. <laughs> and uh, I drive the truck, sometimes play bass. Like <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> So y'all formed around 2016, right? Up, uh, yeah, up we Kevin point? and I started playing in 2016. Uh, the two of us were in a band in Fredonia in 1999 um, that kind of petered out around 2000, 2001. Um, at that point, I moved to New York City. And long story short, I moved to New York, uh, moved to Ithaca in 2016, and Kevin and I started playing again. Oh. And then uh, a little bit after that, uh, Casey joined us. So from 99 to 2016 to now, <laughs> 2023, how do you think your sound's kind of evolved and how'd you find wow. you know, what you guys are doing now? Uh, I think it, well, the, the idea behind this band is that we were kind of uh, all learning a new skill. So Joe was learning how to sing and play guitar. I was learning how to play the drums because I'm actually a saxophone player. And Casey's learning how to drive his truck. <laughs> and play bass <laughs> at the same time. So that was kind of the uh, the idea behind the whole band, but that was like whatever seven eight years ago. Whenever you said 2016, and uh, I hope that we've come further than just learning how to do our stuff, and we're actually making it now. I think. Yeah, I think we started just kind of going with what we did for 20 years you know, Fugazi, Unwound type of sound, um, you know, like anything Discord. And then with Casey joining, um, Casey has uh, a lot of different influences and kind of hit me to a lot of music. And uh, so that's kind of evolved into what it is, which uh, is a mismash, mismash of uh, Discord, indie rock, and Japanese metal. I think that sums it up. <laughs> nice. So in uh, June of 2021, you guys put out your EP Indexer. Uh, tell us about how the project kind of came together. Uh, Indexer is, is that the one that we recorded? No, that's PLOS. That's PLOS. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, the first 7-inch uh, we recorded in Kevin's basement, um, and... I have uh, a little bit of knowledge of how to do that stuff, and it turned out okay, but we really needed uh, a better sound. So there's a local guy uh, in T-Berg, Trumansburg, that's about 20 minutes north of Ithaca. Um, and it is north, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sunwood Recording, and uh, Chris is like, he's a real geek about this stuff. And, um, you know, we just went there and got a bigger sound and we got uh, Jay Robbins, who is uh, formerly in Jawbox and Burning Airlines to mix it. And uh, just kind of kept on going with that. We have uh, eight more songs in the can that we're working on uh, finishing uh, a full album nice. right now. Nice. Well, y'all have already said earlier, you're very well acquainted with Fredonia. So I'm, I'm <laughs> a little curious, what was the music scene like Ooh. back when y'all were getting started and how do you think it's kind of changed to what you've seen here at BJ's today? Well, I don't, I don't know all that much about the music scene other than Restless Moisture, who lives in my old house, so <laughs> shout out to them. Hey! Pork and Beans. It was called Pork and Beans back then. Temple, go, go check them out. We used to have big shows in there. The Baseball Furies used to play there and Discount. And, uh, uh, yeah, we had, there. That we had many house shows there. Wow. Um, and it all comes together. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh. At that point, there were a lot of jam, hippie type bands. I don't know if that's still going on now. And then there was kind of more of a bar band scene and also like us that were doing like just indie rock stuff. So um, this, this is my first time ever playing BJ's, which is crazy. 
but we had house shows. I yeah. mean, that was where, I mean, I probably played every basement around here, but when it came to bars, like, we didn't really play in bars or go to bars. That not, not until we were seniors. Um, I did play uh, my s- freshman and sophomore here at BJ's, but I was in a band with some um, older classmates. Um, but I did c- play the caboose a couple times. Yeah, we, we did play the caboose. <laughs> I don't know if you guys it's know, right but this fire station right here, uh-huh. I think, used to be, is it, it was that? It's that. Oh, okay. Yeah, well um, that is now, Fox? Oh, 60, 64 on the yeah. rocks. The, the bar? Yeah, yeah, bar and grill. That used to be a, oh, that, was a <laughs> there. that was an old school bar, and they had an actual caboose out front. Oh, well that and, makes um, sense, because we have stickers in the station. Uh, that advertised the caboose, and I've always wondered what the caboose was. It was sweet. You go in the caboose. We played there more. I mean, we never played BJ's. We played well, the caboose. I did. Old band <laughs> counterclockwise, and we played the caboose. Oh. Um, the caboose. The caboose. You could actually it had seats and tables in it, so you oh, could go that's drink. That's crazy. It. And they had killer pool. jerky pool. and <laughs> and pool and a, and a nice a nice big stage too. Um, so I hope that there's like a, you know, a nice variety of of music still going on but um it seems like there's still a an active house um scene for uh for for donia yeah, bands yeah. Yeah. so uh you were you guys went on tour with personal style this past summer you just played with them again tonight uh what was it like touring with those guys and do you have any specific memories with them oh, man. they're kind of the best people to tour with and to hang out with uh they're full of kindness and wisdom um i don't know if i have any particular story kev do you have any or joe Uh, well so when they came to ithaca and we all we took them swimming in our local swimming holes and uh the the elation on evan's face when he saw that swimming hole will live in my memory forever uh fantastic but no, we, we had like the greatest time with them. And they're actually playing three more. They're going on tour from this. They're playing three more shows the next three days. And I was like, what the hell? You're supposed to take us with you. Like, we're, there's a rule. You don't play out of state without us. Oh, this is a great song. This That's is like my awesome. favorite song. <laughs> and well, it wasn't on tour, but I guess my new favorite memory is uh, fixing their guitar amp in the basement of BJ's <laughs> two hours before they play. And as you can hear, it seems to Obviously be working. It, it seems to be so, working, so it worked your yeah. magic. This, <laughs> yeah, I have a, a business in Ithaca that, in some way, started here, um, but 20 years later. So I have an app repair business called Resident Noise in in Ithaca, New York. Nice, nice. Well, we're at the part of the interview where I gotta say, I'm the technical director of the local lowdown, right? I make sure all the techs work and I do all the editing, but. I've got another job, another passion in life, and that's being the one and only merch gremlin. The merchiest gremlin alive. I'm in the gold mines digging for band merch. All oh. the band merch. All the great artist merch. And let me tell you, I walked into the great establishment of Blackjacks on this fine, <laughs> fine March night, <laughs> and there was a suitcase of goodies. There was a nice. suitcase of records, cassettes, <laughs> everything and everything. I uh, usually I come in here I'm like you know when when's the cassettes come when's the CDs come but you guys got me stooped you, you guys have me you know kerfuddled so I mean <laughs> are there sticker more stickers we've coming? got lots like, of what's, stickers what's, we what's got the merch shirts line looking like uh, so so it's funny um, we're like lunatics and we have three seven inches mm-hmm. which I don't think many bands do <laughs> yeah vinyl records just to be clear right and like instead of putting them all out on one record we like to spend a lot of money and a lot of time records (laughs) putting out little records and many of them but why not we're working on a series of of uh four that we can put together we're going to put together in a box Oh, and then uh, nice. everyone can just get four at a time in one big box. I also saw you guys had a little distro uh, in the little suitcase. What's yeah, the story so I, that? I, I, well, how do I put it? Well, I kind of run this record label called Habit Forming Records. Uh, it's been going on for 20 years. Mm-hmm. It's basically just putting out friends' records. Um, so that's what the distro is. It's not, I don't put a lot of. Uh, time and energy into it mm-hmm. 
but uh it's just it it's actually pretty cool that people come to me and they're just like hey can you put this out do you want to slap a logo on the back and i'm like heck yeah. yeah i mean i put i think there's maybe 12 or 13 releases now and it's like mm-hmm. all the same maybe eight people <laughs> <laughs> but i love it some of the first releases were my college band from the from 97 to 99 and one of the latest releases is our album, oh. and we got back together after 15 years. Nice. And we're still nice. Right, 1800 and Froze to Death. The kings of Fredonia back in the old <laughs> days. I mean, rea- literally the kings of Fredonia. I would say that for sure. <laughs> so, some of your recent posts have been teasing about a possible new project in the works. Uh, is there anything you could tell us about that? Is it an EP, single, LP? So, well, that's what we were kind of saying. We have eight songs recorded. We're uh, adding sugar and spice and gravy and cherries on top of that. And uh, we're going to try and send it out to Bob Weston in Chicago to get mastered and uh, put out a full-length record. On top of all these seven inches we're <laughs> also <laughs> goofing around with. So so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But we got a lot, thing, a lot of things cooking. Awesome. Uh, is there any last-minute things you'd like to talk about or plug before we wrap up? just god bless fredonia i mean it's in my blood like it's been it's so funny that like you're only here for four years but it leaves such an imprint on you for some reason i don't know like every day i probably a day doesn't go by i have some memory like pop into my head like oh walking down central ave or going to the erie dining hall or whatever like it's just it's just four years that like really leaves an impression on you so that's what i was trying to say in there like enjoy it you know yeah i agree and uh i just hope you know there are lots of fredoni bands that keep on going and keeping the scene going and uh you know making connections that last a lifetime kevin and i you know we've been friends since the late 90s and we're still playing in bands together and uh it all started here even my uh I, I met my wife here, so, you know, a lot of things can happen in four years at a at a SUNY school like Fredonia. Except Fred Fest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for talking to us. Uh, you put on a great set tonight. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you all very much for listening. I've been Koss. And it's been Alex. And we will catch you in the next interview.